Hey there and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing the I Love Perfumes tag. I actually saw this on It's MJ's channel. She didn't tag me, I just tagged myself, but she, I loved her video on it and she said that it kind of started out on Spanish fragrance YouTube and in that community. And so I checked out some of those. If you speak Spanish or if you're fluent in Spanish, definitely check those out. They're great and she kind of brought them to the English side and I really liked it. So I wanted to do my own. And yeah, we'll get started. There's 10 questions and I really stuck strictly to only one fragrance per answer, even though there's a lot that could have filled in for a couple of these questions. But the first one is your favorite celebrity perfume. And for me, again, there were so many I could have picked from, but I tried to go by the, the particular fragrance that I bought the most that I obviously have you know committed to repurchasing, especially with the collection of my size. So as it stands, I picked Miami Glow by JLo. This one, I mean, I think a lot of people have spoken about this already. I've spoken about it. It's just this delicious, fruity, floral, beachy scent. It lasts a long time. It's a really, really nice celebrity fragrance. But beyond that, it's just a nice fragrance. I would buy this fragrance no matter who it was by or which house. If it was more expensive, I would also continue to purchase it, which I think says a lot. And I have repurchased it and I will continue to probably repurchase. I mean, I have already a backup of this and it's so inexpensive. It's just really, really nice. It has lovely memories attached to it for me personally. And yeah, that would be my pick. Then it is uh, your favorite three notes. And for me, this was really difficult. Other than the fact that if you've been watching my channel, you know my first pick was very easy. Violet is my favorite note. Uh, if I had to pick one, I would just pick Violet. It's the fragrance that makes me the happiest and feel the most like me. But the other two are hard. I mean, there's so many notes that I really, really enjoy depending on season or how they're mixed with other notes or the accords that you can make with them. But in the end, I ended up picking Neroli and Iris. I was torn between Neroli and Orange Blossom, but I tend to have Neroli more often in my fragrances. And I do enjoy kind of the oilier, richer version um, of having Neroli compared to having the actual flower and orange blossom note. But I love both. And then Iris, again, I was, you know, torn between amber and heliotrope and a bunch of other white florals or, you know, the darker notes that I enjoy like amber and white tobacco. But I had to go with Iris. There's so many fragrances that I own and or love that have Iris. So those would be my three. Then your favorite fragrance for spring and summer. I was really torn on this, whether I go the citrusy bergamot route, which I really, really enjoy and they're so fresh and they do great in heat, or the more uh, sunscreeny, you know, slightly powdery, copper tone sunscreen kind of neroli feel. And in the end, I went with the sunscreen side. And yeah, Bond Number no. 9's Fire Island is my pick. It just screams summer to me. I guess a little spring, but definitely summer. It's beachy, it's got a lot of neroli, it's sandy and kind of a little bit of honey in there, and it's just really, really beautiful. It can transport you to a beach in, in seconds flat. And I think from this line, all the island fragrances from Bond Number no. 9, this is my favorite. It's the only one I own a full bottle of. I haven't smelled Coney Island, which I know people adore, but this is just kind of the best version that I found of this sort of fragrance, of the Bobby Brown beaches and the surf from Overland and Sea. Just those kind of fragrances. This is my favorite of those, so that would be my pick. Then, on the other side, a fragrance that you hate. If you've been watching my collection series, I think you might be able to guess, but it would be Womanity by Terry Mugler. This one is just... Yeah, it's it does not do it for me. It is the only fragrance that until now has I haven't just not liked it or disliked it or even hated it. It truly like it can make me sick smelling it or nauseated. Um it's got fig and caviar and it's salty and to me it doesn't do anything favorable. Um to, to me and on my body chemistry. I do have a subscriber who said she really liked it and it smelled sweet on her skin, which 
I wish I had. I'm so jealous. I'm so happy that it works for some people. And I love that idea that fragrances can smell so, so different on so many people. But for me, this was an easy pick. Then it's which perfume was a love at first sniff. And this one, it was hard because I do blind, blind buy a lot. And when I do, there are some that I've absolutely adored. But this one, it just has a really good memory of really, really, really loving it at first sniff. And this is La Tosca from Zerjoff from the Casamrati line. I um, had bought three Zerjoff fragrances because I really decided to get into them. And this was the one of the three that immediately stood out. I had a feeling it would be because it's got violet and violet leaf in there. But uh, yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's that violet leaf and that amber and a little bit of vanilla. It's ozonic and it's, I don't know, it's like violety and slightly powdery but not really. It's, it's really, really nice. I absolutely adore it. I think it's totally worth the splurge. I know it's not uh, an inexpensive brand by any means. It's a niche brand, but I think it's worth the money. And it, especially if you like these kinds of fragrances or if you can get a sample, I adore La Tosca. And every time I wear it, What's interesting is I kind of feel like I discover another side to it. At first, all I could really get was that violet and violet leaf. Now I really, I get that kind of, that vanilla and that amber and I think there might be eucalyptus in here too. Like I'm getting the more earthy sense out of it. It's really, really nice and complex. Then a f the fragrance that lasts the longest. And this was slightly difficult in that I have some older fragrances that are kind of I don't know, very 80s or 90s that I don't wear that often that I just have as reference that last a long time. But then I remembered Amour Sunshine, one of my favorites ever. Uh, and the story that I think I've shared briefly on my channel of I first smelled this uh, in an airport on a layover in the Munich airport. And I sprayed it on quickly on my collar of my sweatshirt and I just I was running here and there trying to get everything sorted got to my gate so that's another hour or so maybe two there and then I had a ten and a half hour flight and then you know driving home long story short the next day I washed that sweatshirt and after a wash and fabric softener and drying and everything I put on that sweatshirt and on the collar you could still smell Amour Sunshine that's never happened to me before. It's incredible. This is very much beast mode. The juice is one of a kind. I think I will continue to buy this and, you know, for as long as they make it. And it's absolutely beautiful and it lasts forever on clothing and on the skin. Then your sweetest perfume. This one, there were so many. It's MJ actually mentioned this. I think it's very common to just kind of think pink sugar or fragrances like that will be the sweetest but oftentimes as was the case for me they have other notes that actually make them a little bit more complex than you'd think and maybe even a little less sweet especially in the dry down so in spelling and smelling that and other fragrances like scandal which i thought would be the sweetest because of that honey note it's very sickly and syrupy but again you know it has other notes that i don't want to say tone it down but that change the sweetness but one that kind of remains equally as sweet from top note to dry down. Personally, Insolence Eau de Toilette by Guerlain. This one is just a candied violet powder, delicious, delicious fragrance. And this, if you don't like sweet fragrances because of that candied violet and the fact that it's powdery because of that violet, it just kind of surrounds you in that. And you're smelling sweet all day long. You're smelling sweet from the first sniff to the absolute dry down. So that would be my pick. Then best fragrance clone. I don't really own fragrance clone um, or fragrance clones or kind of dupes from houses that have duped fragrances. I do have two random little ones from Silo, which was from a really small town in Spain. I don't wear those, so I didn't really count them, but I thought I would choose Burberry Her because Francis Curjean who made this, also made Baccarat Rouge 540, obviously, and they are very similar. They're not 100% dupes, but they're very similar. And I just think he was inspired by his own work, by his own creations, what he likes in fragrances for women. 
And I adore this one to the point where I might not get Baccarat Rouge 540. I might because I adore fragrances, but it's delicious. It's kind of that kind of DNA to a certain extent with some strawberries and cream. I think you can own both if you love fragrances, but you can also get a really good idea of it from this as well. So that one's beautiful. Then a fragrance that you think all women should own. For me, this was hard because people have so many different tastes, but I had to come back to Feminin Pluriel by Maison Francis Curejean. This one, I think he really hit the nail on the head with the naming of this one. Feminin Pluriel is a little bit of a play on words um, on that kind of French conjugation. If you speak French, I won't bore you with the grammar, uh, with French grammar, but basically, you know, words can be conjugated in either masculine or feminine, singular and plural, and um, plural, and they, he played with that idea and he talked about it in a, in a kind of clip where he was talking about the creation of this and how a woman can be more than one thing and she can be many things and he played with all the floral notes that he really really like, likes and it completely has that. It's so beautiful in its simplicity. It has a bunch of floral notes but it's airy and it's fresh and it's slightly shampoo-y and I adore this one and it's just so so feminine and I think every woman could have this as a staple in their collection. And then finally the most recent purchase and I had a haul and first impressions recently where I got four new fragrances. I got them all at the same time but since it was a first impressions I just chose the one I opened last in that video which is this one. I think it's called Secret Amber or Dark Amber. I'll put the name here, but basically it's by Oscar de la Renta. And I bought this because of the scented here on YouTube. She talked about how it was a really inexpensive but beautiful rosy oud. And that's exactly what it is. It's a really nice oud that isn't animalic in any way it's just dark and rich and it's got a great rose in there and I would love to wear this in the fall and winter uh, next year so that was my full video thank you so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time bye